All right, it's that time of year again. Hard Knocks is back on HBO. The NFL is just weeks away from returning. We are getting ready to cover it all. This season's Hard Knocks focusing on the Detroit Lions. I don't know any Lions fans, but I did get our pop culture correspondent who, like me, roots for a very bad franchise. Sandra Rose is here. Sam, how are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I feel like I don't have a bad franchise, but a not amazing franchise. Well, our franchises both have like sucked for the most part for about like the past like 10 years. Yeah, but you know what? It's good to stay true and true to our uh, our team. I mean, I am repping the Jets shirt tonight just to honor our appearance in Hard Knocks in 2010, which is probably one of my favorite seasons of all time. <laughs> I was going to say, crap, I'm not repping my team. So uh, nobody watch this on YouTube. No, no the, the YouTube version will get some looks. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, but like hard, like what's your history with the Hard Knocks? Are you a big fan of the thing? Um, I'm like, uh, an active listener. Uh, I feel like this season I'll watch more because I am like loving the head coach, Dan. Um, but normally I kind of just like, I tune in, I tune out when I want to. Uh, but this season has really made, made me want to watch the entire thing. So it's basically team dependent. Yes. Yes, definitely. I can get that because like I'm a big football like junkie, so I'll watch it regardless of who's on here. But like some teams have been more boring than other ones, and like this team feels like they're going to be exciting. Exactly. I have like a, I have very good hope that they're going to do well. But then again, uh, I always put my all my eggs in the wrong basket. Yeah, I remember when they made the pick. I think back before the draft, they said, "Oh, Detroit's going to be on Hard Knock this year." I'm like, okay, I guess nobody wanted to do it, and I think they're one of the teams that could have been drafted to be on Hard Knock, so they have somebody here, but. I got to say, with the coaching staff, with Aiden Hutchinson, I felt like there's potential here for this to have some interesting storylines. So far, so good. Definitely. I'm not going to lie to you. I was very upset because I'm like, why are the Jaguars being picked? I feel like they'd be such a great team to be following around, like, especially because, like, it's the Jaguars and, like, Trevor Lawrence. I guess if they couldn't get followed with Bortles or uh, Minshew Jr. or whatever, like, They can't get Lawrence, but what, whatever. I'm just biased. Well, I think the Jaguars were exempt this year because they got a new coach. So I think if you have a new coach or you make the playoffs for a certain number of time, you're exempt from being in the thing. Or if you've been on it the last 10 years, like they have okay. rules that you can't be forced to do it. Like, I mean, Jaguars could have volunteered. They just chose not to. Well, shame on them. Right, Mike? But maybe in the future they'll be on. I would love it. Oh my God. I'd be on every week with you. I'd make you talk with me. Through the entire thing. So the, audience, the Jaguars. So the audience knows that the Jaguars are next year's Hard Knocks team. Sam, I'll do weekly recaps of, of the episodes. Uh, you better invite <laughs> me or I'll be, I'd be upset. Yeah. I gotta say this episode though, like overall was pretty good. I had a lot of fun watching these guys. I was not expecting that when I started this, I started the night. Yeah. I was not expected, like expected to like, like this at all. And I'm just like, yeah, let's go Lions. Like I, rem- like I was watching and I'm like, yeah, like let's go, let's win this whole thing. Yeah. Um, it was it was a great episode. Yeah, and I always like to see how they started because usually like the first thing they show you is like the big tones that sort of grab you for the season. I remember especially during the uh COVID year, I think in 2020 that the Rams and the Chargers on, they started out with like Anthony Lynn talking to his team on Zoom and revealing that he had COVID and that he hadn't told publicly. That really grabbed me that year. Mm-hmm. Dan Campbell's speech here at the top of the show, where he's talking about like here are all the different types of teams in the league, like we are here. We want to be here. Like he was sucking me in like, okay, I want to go play for this guy. I'm ready to get invested in the show this year. Um, I was like, is there an adult football league I could join? <laughs> like, to be completely honest with you, this guy had me like revved up for the season. Yeah, I know. Campbell, like he's a very, mo- very inspiring head coach. And like his speech really like got you like excited to start watching this team and see what they do this summer. Exactly. And the fact that he has so much like, you know, past and influence um in the nfl it's just like yeah this guy knows what he's talking about like i was just so excited to just like hear from him yeah it was too and i did like that they used that to get to the intro i don't know if you follow like watch the credits regularly on these things i thought this was so cool how they did it with like the lions players working on basically the assembly line going on being cut in with the car being built i thought that was a lot of fun yeah no i totally agree yeah, it's like they do some creative stuff like that. I remember the Browns, they had, I think, a couple of years they had them like going to the rock and roll hall, like going around like Cleveland and showing some hard steel workers. And like, mm-hmm. this was cool. I felt like this one fit and vibe much better than that. I agree. Yeah. Speaking of Dan Campbell, I feel like he was the star of this episode. We get a lot of stuff about his playing career. I mean, he's 
I remember him as a, with the Giants back in the day. He was with the with the Cowboys, a couple other teams. He retired. Tells the story about how he got into coaching and how he was invited for like a week of camp. And he's invited for a training camp, and then he becomes an intern. And then he becomes a coach, and like it's a fascinating story to see all that Danny Campbell has gone through, get to where he is now. Yeah, the fact that like I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't know about Danny Campbell that much before watching this. To be completely honest with you, yes, my family are diehard Giants fans. Um, and I remember like, you know, hearing about him, but, uh, he just, I don't know. It's just like the way he was like portrayed in the NFL, like doesn't seem like it matches up him as a coach, which is a good thing for me. Um, I just thought he was just like really awesome. He seems like such a hard worker, like he puts his all in and I feel like that's what makes you like him so much, you know? Yeah, I know like Bill, like you got a lot from Bill Parcells, who like was like the running the help running the team in Miami at the point when he retires said, Hey, come work for me. And then like he gets a lot out of the experience of Parcells. You see a lot of that mentality as a Jack fan who saw Parcells coach his team. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of Parcells in him. Yeah. Um he's he's just a funny dude. I just love it. I get to love it. We do get a great segment there. Like, like we come after that, we see the up downs at practice where like they have the defensive all defensive players like doing the up down drill and like. Dan Campbell, the defensive coordinator, Aguilar, doing it with them, which is like, that's something like if I'm a, if I'm a player here, I'm like, my coach really cares. Like he wants us to do the work. I'll be more invested. In, like I see that my coach is like actually doing it with us, opposed to just wandering around making sure, like, checking who's working, who's not. Yeah. And the best was like, I don't know if it was just me, but like towards the end, I'm like, okay, go Dan, please don't give up. Yeah. Like, cause he was yeah. like getting slower and slower because you know, it's that's up downs are stupid hard. It, yeah. You can pretend that you could do like, 20 but in reality after the fifth one you're like sweating and dying like I even tried doing up downs even like you know now and I can barely get five done but I was just like really like he's just so easily to root for yeah he is and like you saw at the end too he's like basically you see like he started running out of, like starting to like run out of breath because he's like working so hard that he does get the job done so good job Dan coach Campbell exactly and his whole fact that he's like I was afraid I broke my wrist earlier, but I'm okay. You know, like such a football guy. Yeah, he is a massive football guy. And then we get the moment of the episode here where we, I think this went viral even before the uh, show aired this first episode. And we have one of the, one of the hard we see the rookies like initiating with the team and like forming talents in front of there. I think later in the episode, see one of the linebackers salsa dancing like in front of the, in front of the locker room, but. We get, we get Aiden Hutchinson, the number two overall pick in the draft, singing Billy Jean. And I got to play the audio for the uh, for the podcast listeners here because this is just too great to not share with you guys. This is, again, from HBO's Hard Knocks. <laughs> She was more like a beauty queen in the movie scene. I said, no mama, do me I know. This was amazing. I was laughing the entire time watching this. It was so hilarious and amazing. Yeah, not only does Aiden Hudson have like a pretty good singing voice, he has the lyrics down. He's got some good moves to go with the song. I just love like how he messes up in the beginning. And then he's like, wait, 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 no, 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 I got this. And then like it cuts after they're singing to his family. He's like, 
yeah, they're like, yeah, you're really still still living off that high of like performing. And I thought that was the funniest thing because this is like Lily White Boy from the suburbs of like Detroit yeah. singing Billy Jean and everyone's getting into it. It was amazing. It was so funny. Yeah, and you have to watch the video because at one point they cut to a big shot of the whole auditorium. There's a guy sitting in the second row Rips his shirt off, flings it forward. A guy in the front row and yell just grabs it with one hand, no look, and immediately starts waving in the air. Like, this is incredible. I was going to say, if you're on TikTok, it's definitely trending on the For You page as well. So, like, it's just amazing. Like, if you watch it over and over again, you can't even imagine. It feels like, like a glitch in the Matrix. Yeah, this is absolutely incredible. And it just makes you feel bad for you because he could have been on your team. Yeah. But he's not, so it's okay. Let Detroit have him. Like, we wouldn't have had that amazing moment. You know, you could have been singing Billie Jean in the Jaguar locker room. It would have been fun. But we also wouldn't have seen it because the Jaguars didn't want to be part of it, so. Yeah, I got to say, though, he also was a star of this episode. Like, he was so, so fun. He was so fun, and he has, like, so much heart and hustle that he just wants to be on this team. That You're just really rude for him, like, day one. Yeah, and like he's really won himself, won himself over with the team right there. And I gotta mm-hmm. say, karaoke night with the Lions is gonna, is gonna be a riot. I want to see this on the show. Yeah, no, I'm very excited to see how this keeps going. Yeah, I want to see if anybody if they have any more rookies singing in front of the in front of the uh, whole team here. See if we could top that. Ah, uh, they gotta. Yeah, so, I mean, we got the salsa dancing right linebacker later on in the, in the episode. He was pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty good moves. Yeah, definitely. He was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now we go on. The next thing I want to talk about here is these guardian calves, which I don't know if you've seen these around the league right now. Like they are these big, like poofy, look like giant, like, 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 have you ever seen like the inside of a like panic room at like an in insane in asylum? Like it, that's the kind of material it looks like. And, yeah. And they look like kind of like mushrooms on top of their helmet. Yeah. yeah they give them to the offensive linemen, defensive linemen, tight ends and linebackers to reduce like impacts on your head during practice. And, they look incredibly stupid, but like they are very effective. I think yeah. in terms of props, I can't think of a more fun prop segment than like this is probably the most fun I had the props on Hard Rock since the Jets did the Shake Ways back in 2010. <laughs> yeah, and as a trainer's kid, yeah. we want to have as much safety as we can for football. Um, as long as it helps. Like, I mean, football's dangerous. They have the worst, you know, record of long-term injuries with brains and everything. So if it helps, it helps. They look silly, but like it helps. I mean, it was interesting how they portrayed that whole thing, you know? Yeah. I did appreciate uh, Hank Fraley, the O-line coach, was saying, if I have a lineman here who worries about what he looks like on the field, he's in the wrong profession. That's very true. And it's like a lot of, I feel like even kids watching this show are going to be like, that looks stupid. I don't look cool. And then just saying that, like, you know, it's, it's a, sheds a positive life, like safety over how cool or how good you look. Yeah, I think it'll be, I think it's definitely fun. I mean, last year, I think the prop segment was, I think the Cowboys riding bikes around camp. That was not as fun as this. Uh, yeah, definitely not. And it has the safety feature. So I feel like it's better. Yeah, it definitely was better here. And we get, I think also we get a very lousy practicing up here. And we had some fun with HBO had like one point where like Dan Campbell's like getting, hey, stop the music. And then they actually cut the music out of the episode. And the, yes. Was- yeah. There were some really awesome like post-production edits yeah. in there that I really enjoyed. That was probably my favorite one. Yeah. And this probably was my, apart from Billy G's, my favorite moment of the episode is like Dan, like Dan Hill gives his impassioned speech about like how we got to be better. And then you see Jamal Williams in the huddle and he's come from Green Bay where they win a lot. <laughs> Spent last year in Detroit where they start like 0-13 before they win a game. And like his incredible speeds are like I, I'm working hard. And like I will, I'm he's basically in tears talking about how much he wants to win, how he wants to like losing sucked and how it was not fun last year. He wants to have fun there. I'm like that one got me fired too. I'm like, like you are the man, Jamal. Like I am inspired by you right now. Right? Like you're we're one episode in, and I don't know about you, but I'm already like really rooting for the freaking Lions to yeah. like win the, the whole thing, the whole Super Bowl. Like I'm just like, let's go Lions. Meanwhile, I'm like, let's go Jaguars. But you know what I mean? Like they have these really great personalities, which is you know, all on the editing end for hard knocks, but they really, you know, make you love this team just so early on. Yeah, and this is an impressive episode considering most of the focus is on the coaching staff and like two players. Like we haven't really seen most of the team yet. Yeah. I mean, like I feel like the coaching staff, since they talk about how long, um, you know, how 
all of their coaches came from these backgrounds of you know professional NFL teams especially like the quarterback coach you know not gonna lie he's my favorite right now but uh <laughs> but you know what I mean like I feel like you know they have like a lot of grit like you know yes yeah. yeah. episode is you know based upon but um it's it feels like a different NFL team this year you know yeah and speaking of that coaching staff I mean we talk about you reference Mark Brunel former Jack quarterback he's their quarterback coach Aaron Glenn's been a coordinator used to be corner on the Jets Stu Staley's on the team is a running back coach Antoine Randall is the receiver coach Hank Fraley played an offensive line elite for 13 years Kelvin Shepard's a linebacker for a long time there they said something that fact was like basically that coach has a 80 something years of combined NFL playing experience, which is like crazy to think about it. Cause now it's like they, not many stats are constructed that way. Exactly. I just feel like there's just so much knowledge in like, you know, combined. It's just like, how can you not win? Yeah. You can't, I love that team. And like, I know like the personalities in that group are great. I also love the fact that Dan Campbell showed some respect for his coaches. I remember the story that Kelvin Shepard is talking about how like he was going for the interview. So about, oh, I should just like, cut my hair so I can be more corporate. He's like, no, don't do that. You, I, I want you for you, not for like corporate NFL style. Exactly. He wants him for his knowledge, not for like how he looks. It's a very, it's a very, impa- that was a very impactful scene. Yeah. Very empowering moment. Which I love to see that. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like that's the most part. I feel like they had a dynamite, like 35 minutes with the last 10 kind of like fizzle a little bit. Yeah. But you know, there's a bunch more episodes to go. So <laughs> I mean, it's never a tough spot because usually the first one's harder because they don't have a preseason game they can go to towards the end of it. Cause like, I think the next three weeks you're going to see like a preseason game basically be in the episode, which is going to help, but. Yes. Yeah. I don't think they play either. I don't think they play my teams here. I don't, do they, do they play the Jaguars in preseason? I don't think so. Um, but I thought that they played during the season, but I could be wrong. Yeah. We'll see about, we'll see about that. But I, I think that, they would be an interesting one to see. Like if I know I think Trevor Lawrence made an appearance on Hard Knocks last year. I think he was in the, mm-hmm. one of the I think the Cowboys that played Jacksonville preseason last year. Like they kind of remember him being on the show. Okay. If not, he was definitely on the in season one when they played the Colts. I never I remember that. Yeah, the Lions play the Jaguars on December 4th. Oh, so that's not gonna be preseason, unfortunately. Yeah, but in season, I could just be upset about who I'm gonna root for. Well, the Jaguars were on the in-season one last year because I remember infamously they knocked the Colts out of the playoffs I beat them the last week of the season. Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah, and the Colts, I don't think have won down there, I think, like, something like eight years, which is insane. You think about how terrible the Jaguars have been for most of the time. Yeah, well, maybe it's just some Jaguars magic that they have. Yeah. Let's have some fun here. Give me the your MVP of the episode. Who is the most I mean, most valuable player in this episode? I mean, I feel like it's kind of a give me, but like Aiden Hutchinson is my MVP. Yeah. So like, you know, you meet his family, you know, his dad was like a Michigan guy. He's a Michigan guy. Like, it's just like all he knew is like Detroit. And he's just like, I don't know what it is about this kid's energy, but he's like, yeah, like, let's go. Like, you know, he's here to win. And like the fact when Dan Campbell was like, no, no, no. Like, yeah, he got, you know, confused, not confused, but he got kind of like bamboozled in the play. Like he's going to learn from that and go on. And I just feel like, yes, I'm here for Aiden. You know what I mean? I'm very interested to see where he's going to go. Yeah. Also underrated Aiden Hudson's team was when he's in the ice bath with the uh, other rookie from who went to college. I, it was from yeah, Nigeria. Yeah. Oh my God. That was somebody's like, yeah. So like you would do it again in Michigan. He's like, uh, no, Memphis. <laughs> like, but that was so, it was such like a cute little scene, like unnecessary completely, but it was like, it was nice. It's a good character moment. It was. Yeah. It like seemed, it was a nice, you know, team bonding moment. Yeah. For me, my MVP has to be Dan Campbell because like, he was like, we start with him. We, we really, he really was the main character's episode and he has a lot of good moments in it. The up downs was great. And like his speech that inspired small Williams, speech is great. And I feel like I, I'm going to be bold here. I think he's the best coach. He's had a hard knock since Rex Ryan. I mean, honestly, like I'm not going to lie. I haven't watched every single hard knocks episode, but like he makes me want to watch this entire season. Like he really like makes you want to like root for them. Plus like he seems like a, he seems like a, like an everyday kind of guy. Yeah, it was just crazy when the guy who started his press conference with the trailers are saying how they're going to bite off kneecaps. Yeah, yeah. 
I, it's funny that that's the guy here. And I think, I think this is a fun episode and we watched it on HBO max, which has had its own little fun. We got to talk about that a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. And I don't know if you've been following here since you're at the pop culture correspondent here, but like the HBO max, like saga has been crazy since they reports came out that they basically canceling nearly finished black Batwoman movie to get a tax write off. They canceled the scoop sequel for that same reason. They're moving series on this thing. I feel bad for the future of HBO Max because this is one of the few streaming services I really love because the content they were producing was quality. Exactly. And like the fact that, and this is very specific, so I apologize to any listeners, you do Brendan Fraser wrong? Yeah. Like that is messed up. He's a great dude. I'm just upset because I'm a big Brendan Fraser fan, have been since I've basically been self aware. and his whole life was behind this bad girl movie yeah. and they just scrapped it. Yeah. And in terms of like the movies being canceled here, that gets canceled, but the one with Ezra Miller is still on track. Uh, I don't know if you've seen all the hilarious memes on Twitter, but it's yeah. like, never know where Ezra Miller is going to pop up in like, you know, a state and commit X, you know, felony. But like, I don't understand how that has gone this far like how is that okay i mean they delayed the movie like six months trying to get ezra under control and that clearly has not worked he's he's literally in a different state it feels like every week and every week he commits some sort of criminal activity in a different state how has he not gone to federal prison yet i just don't get it because i know that like this movie, I think they, they was a $200 million movie and like mm -hmm. apparently it's testing well with audiences. They're trying to like make it work in some way. I saw today that there's three options on the table right now, which is number one, Ezra calms himself down, goes on an apology tour, and then they promote the movie. Two is they promote the movie without him at all, which seems like a disaster in its own right. Or three, mm -hmm. which is unlikely, but growing by the day, they scrapped the movie entirely, which would be insane. I mean, to be honest, at this point, point i'm just ready for option three he does not deserve a movie he does not deserve an apology tour nothing just no. go away you should go away but like they are not doing that yet and like from the general sense that they're merging with discovery plus and becoming a new service next year so i mean i'll see what happens with that the thing i'm worried about is that with in the cast cost cutting mode with this mer with this merger i am very terrified that we do not that i don't get the ending of westworld i'm gonna be very upset if that happens yeah, I have not watched this new season at all because I'm still upset from last season. So I guess after the season is finished, I will come to you for your opinion if I should watch it or not. I will tell you right now, there's one episode left. This season is phenomenal. No way! They got back on track finally. All right, I'll wait till the season is over next week and then I'll watch the whole way through. They done. A, I've been, I mean, you and I have both talked about how upset we've been with Westworld. They really did a good job cutting down the storylines. There's really like three now to follow instead of like 17, like it was in season three. Okay. It, makes, it makes more sense. They really streamlined the character focus, I think, to like two or three main beats. They have some good twists in there. They they do have Evan Rachel Wood back in a different role, which is okay, a lot of fun. But how's Maeve doing? Maeve has been active this season. She's had a big, got a big storyline going. In a good way? Yes. All right, I'll watch it then. You know me and my Maeve love. Yeah, it's basically there's like three storylines. Like she and like she and Caleb, Aaron Paul's character share one. Bernard yes. has his Bernard and Stubb share one, and then uh, then uh, and Rachel Wood is playing a like a character named Christina. She's the third uh, storyline you follow. All right, maybe I'll watch from the beginning again and then go. <laughs> and Ed Harris is having fun this season, also. Yeah. Yeah. They have. All they right. have yeah, they, he has become like at the end of season three. Spoiler for anybody who has has not gotten that far in Westworld, just gave up. Like, there's a host version of him running around now, which is allowing him to basically be the actual man in black and it's like a robot killing machine. All right, so you're thank you for that because now I will definitely invest some of my time. It's it's a worthwhile ride, especially what like when you're able to do it like on the binge. It'll, it'll last, although they, the binge may not recommend because there'll be points you're like, wait, what? I have to like understand this still. They still yeah. Do. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah. So while we're here, like what else do you have going on here? What are you, what are you streaming that you've, you're excited about? Um, let me just like, you know, you know how your beautiful podcast is all about the new things. Yes. I want to throw an old thing in there. Yes. 
Um, very underrated show, Frasier, is what I've been binging a lot lately. Yeah, it's a throwback. It's a big throwback because, you know, Cheers was the 80s into the early 2000s. And then yep. Frasier was like early to 90s into the like 2000s. And I mean, 80s into 90s. Apologies uh, for Cheers. Um, but it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm, I've always enjoyed the show. I've never really done the full rewatch, but like I, when I watched it, I did it. I did enjoy it. Well, if you can, now that's a lot of time and energy. Cheers to Frasier. Amazing. I love it. That's what I've been doing lately. And you know what? I never throw in like old stuff, but I wanted to throw in something old this time. It's a good call. Also, if you would keep up with only murders in the building. I have not. I'm waiting till it's completely over, which I feel like it's now over. Two weeks left after this. Two week. weeks. Okay. I thought there was like this week was the last week, but I'm a week ahead of myself. I, I'll say they do some they 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 do some creative choices here with episode structure again, which I did enjoy. Okay, awesome. I just know that I like want every single episode that I can get my hands on. Yeah. So I have to wait. I'm just I'd rather wait the extra two weeks and then watch, but that is definitely on my list. It is saved on my bookmark. Yeah, that that one I, I recommend as well. And I will ask you, since you were a Game of Thrones person, you're going to be on the House of the Dragon. Uh, yeah, wait, when does that actually start, though? The 21st. It's, it takes over the Westworld slot. I, okay, got you. Yeah, no, I am very invested in that. That's what I'm going to try to keep on track of as much as I can. Yeah, uh, on the Sky Guys podcast, let's be Nick Fry and I talked about this a little bit. We think that Andor, his theory is that Andor went backwards because Disney was terrified of running it up against this show and the Lord of the Rings show coming up in early September. Uh, which I hope you're as equally pumped for, for as like as for me. I actually actually you, never, like. That. Could you try again? Yeah. Okay, Siri. But oh, I, Siri, yeah. Siri is yeah. Siri wants to make an appearance in your podcast today. Yeah, yeah. Siri responded to you. Oh my goodness. Sorry. I apologize. Yeah. Wait, yeah. so have you not seen Lord of the Rings? I'm not a big Lord of the Rings guy, no. <gasps> no. <laughs> Mike, is this a like a little riff in our friendship? I hope not. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Yeah. But uh I am so pumped for the Lord of the Rings show. Yeah, that's coming. I think the in early September that's coming out. So that's gonna be one that people are very pumped about. That's one of the reason Nick's thinking here that like. They don't want to run right into these two shows. They're going to, he thinks the part is they push back and say, you know, let's let people do them. And if they suck a little bit, maybe they'll come on and say, oh, the new show. Let's go check this out. Yeah. No, I I agree. That's a, that's a smart idea. But I will be here for the House of Dragon and the Lord of the Rings show. Yeah. All live. Yeah. Fun stuff here. I also did watch Lightyear recently. I realized that I can't sit and watch a movie in my living room unless. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm going to try again. But the 10 minutes I watched, it was pretty cool. It, it's a very, in my opinion, it's a very mid movie. Yeah, no, I liked the idea of it. I got to the part where he just kept like going for the test ride. Yep. And then like his partner kept getting older and older. And then I yep. got upset about it and I turned it off because I was like, mm, I don't want to watch this. So yeah. I'll go back eventually. Like that part, like I was in, and like it slowly lost my interest. As the movie went on. Okay, cool. So it's not just me. It's like a, it's a regular person thing. Yeah, it's like it's Stank when I call this in this in the in the uh, summer movie preview. We said this movie's gonna be very mid, except it did not make a billion dollars. Did not make any, did pretty much any money. Yeah. Well, I guess I can see that. Hopefully, it gets better. Does it get better? Oh, uh, I did. I was. I gave it like a C when I watched it. That was my grade on it. Uh, and you're so nice in giving grades to movies. Yes. Mm, maybe I'll skip it. Who knows? Who knows? Let's keep the fans guessing. Yeah, we'll, we'll, for Pop Culture Party 4, you can be, uh, place your better enough. Sam will have watched Lightyear by that point. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Sam, thanks for all the time. I really appreciate it. Before I let you, I hope you'll find on social media, you know some of the stuff you're up to. Uh, Twitter, S-D-E-R-O-S-6. Uh, you can find me on TikTok at Sam in Sports. Uh, I post some fun things. Yeah, you certainly do. Make sure you check that out, Sam. Thanks for all the time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.